Today I'm here with Jared Johnson. He's the new canon for music here at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. He's been a canon um, for music for 20 years in South Carolina. He's like a huge and wonderful addition to life here at the church. We're so grateful to have you and so excited about the beginning of your ministry here. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about what music meant to you as a child. You work so closely with the Men and Boys Choir, um, and I, I wonder if you can describe what, what, what music meant to you when, when you were a kid. Thank you. Uh, when, when I was a kid, I got interested in playing the piano and then the organ. And through that, I ended up working with singers in the church as a, as a high school student. And to me, the, uh, the wonderful thing about music was the relationship to the, uh, the people I was working with, the, the close connection with uh, singers in the church. That's been part of my life since childhood. And I know that the boys in the choir here have an extraordinary early start and that deep connection to others through this wonderful sacred art. Yeah, I love the way that we're actually breathing together as part of it. I just, and just coming from even song just now, I mean, I, I was, I, I, it brought me to tears. I mean, it was, it just completed my week. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the organ as, an, as a musical instrument. Like, what makes it so fascinating? So it's so fascinating to so many people. Um, you know, what do you think is the future of the organ? Yeah, great question. I mean, the organ is a very mysterious instrument, isn't it? Because it's so hard to understand. Yes. It's so big. And I think that's part of its uh, magic, is that it's um, kind of got this infinite scope. It can make sounds so loud and so quiet yeah. and so high and so low. I mean, that low sound in Grace Cathedral is oh. almost unlike anything you can hear Goes anywhere in the world. Body. I think that it's, um, a, a, you know, it, it's also a, a singer's instrument. The organ is really singing. It's, you mentioned the, the breathing we do together. Yeah. The organ has lungs. It That's breathes. Right. It moves part of creation into this uh, other, uh, you know, other world where we can hear it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's indescribable, um, particularly the, the incredible organs that we have here at Grace Cathedral. Yeah, every so often on YouTube or on social media, I mean, people really get hold of it. I mean, and people who may not have grown up listening to church organ music all of a sudden are exposed to it. So there's a new chance for new generations to, to learn about it. Yeah. I, find, I found a lot of young people very interested in the organ. And I think that we sometimes misunderstand that it's a, an, well, it is an ancient instrument, but it's not only that. It's very much alive and um, of value to all people at all times. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about the technology of the organ. So in, during my time, you know, we, we um, started having it be a, a di digital instrument. In other words, having digital connections between the keynote and the, and the organ pipes. And, you know, obviously we, the, the, some churches use, um, use uh, digital uh, sounds that, to complement the, the sound of the pipes. Um, you know, what, is that it for the future of the organ? Or you know, how do you see it developing and changing as an instrument? Great question. I mean, I think there will always be a place for acoustic sound yeah. in the church. Uh, I mean, look at this building, which is the resonating chamber of the sound. Yes. Um, there's there's no replacement to my ear for the, the air moving, yeah. which the digital instrument just doesn't do, although they have gotten rather remarkable at getting close uh, to simulating the sound. Um, but there's a reason people come into Grace Cathedral and stand in awe when they hear the, the sound of the organ. Yeah, I mean, I just um, found this delightful CD of, of um, Bach organ, complete organ works, and I, and I was so happy. But you know, uh, there is nothing like being here in person, really hearing it and experiencing yeah. it because you do you feel it in your body. That's right. Yeah, it's so worth the pilgrimage uh, to hear the real thing in the real place. Yeah. You know, my last question is just because um, I. I, I would talk to you forever, but uh, people won't watch us forever. <laughs> but my last question is: um, uh, Is there music that you're that you're discovering now that you're excited about, or uh, music that you can tell us about? That you're Absolutely. Um, I'm always looking for new music and really yeah. interested in the music of living composers. Um, I mean, the a couple of the composers I've really gotten kind of uh, into lately are the music of Judith Weir. It's a remarkable English uh, composer. Um, I did a piece last week by Trevor Weston, a New York-based composer, um, who had a had an early life as a chorister, and writes just beautiful music. Um, and worked last week with a composer um, from Seattle named Jessica French, uh, and did a premiere of her piece.
weeks on Sunday. Uh, those are just a few that come to mind that are a reminder that this ancient art of church music is very much alive and modern, can, um, relevant now, and being given new life by new people who are still studying and recreating. Yeah, well, we're so grateful to have you here. I think you're going to open our eyes to new things and open our ears to new things. And we're looking so much forward to your, your tenure here and your work here. We're very grateful you said yes. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here. So thank you. Again, I'm here with Jared Johnson, and my name is Malcolm Clemens-Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, California. Thanks for watching. We're good news.